Okay, so just uh, did something a little different than what some people suggest to do online to remove the harmonic balancer bolt. Um, instead of using, instead of cranking the engine with a bracket bar on there, uh, braced against uh, something, uh, what I did was I removed the, the uh, radiator fan and I did that with a little bit of elbow grease. So once you disconnect your reservoirs, uh, you can kind of push them aside and uh, just be careful not to put too much stress on the uh, on the hose so that way you know you avoid cracking something and uh, the last thing you want is a radiator fluid leak but it takes a little bit of elbow grease uh, once you unmount the uh, radiator fan from this side you can tuck it you can push it up against uh, the engine block and then pull toward the battery and that's going to allow you to work around um, the radiator um, upper hose here that's kind of blocking um, part of the uh, radiator fan. Once you do that, uh, you can pretty much pull it right out by wiggling some of these out of the way. You can tell there, uh, just three bolts. I've seen some atrocities on YouTube uh, when doing this. So I just wanted to show you this. Um, as long as all these bolts are even, uh, you do not need to use some kind of pry bar or anything like that to prevent the harmonic balancer from, from turning as you as you crank uh, to remove it. So I will show you that. So I have to do it with one hand, but it is coming out. And as you can tell, it's not moving at all. If for some reason these are uneven, let's say you screw this one in further than the rest of the other two, so it's now this bracket here is at an angle like that. That's going to cause the harmonic balancer to, <clears throat> to rotate as you attempt to um, <clears throat> remove it. Here are some uh, similarities and differences between the two pulleys. I have them stacked on top of each other, so this is the old 6 rib, this is the new A rib. Um, aside from the obvious um, difference in, in ribs, uh, the diameter uh, seems to be exactly the same. I already test fitted it. Uh, work, it looks like it fits on there quite quite nicely, uh, but uh, it's going to be a challenge to lighten up the, uh, the, uh, the keyhole uh, during installation, so that's going to be something to look forward to. Uh, if you line them up side by side, oh, sorry about that. Here we go. You can tell that the old rib pulley has a bit of a thicker area here. Um, however, what's, what's important is the offset here. Uh, I took a tape measure to it and they both measure exactly the same. So I'm not expecting any any clearance issues at all with the harmonic balancer once I install it. So um, I'm gonna have to base all of the rest of the pulleys on obviously the crank pulley, make sure that everything is lining up. But um, so far, uh, the the harmonic balancer at least seems to like it's gonna work. All right, sorry for all the background noise. Um, this video here. Um, is gonna cover essentially uh, what to do to help you guys line up uh, the pulleys. And uh, I started at the power steering uh, pump pulley. So as I as I, ins I was uh, installing it or cranking away, I had to have also a uh, um, a screwdriver wedged in there to keep it from from moving. And then I was slowly able to reinstall the power steering pulley back in there. Uh, I did not push it all the way in as far as it could go. I uh, actually eyeballed it and lined it up as best I could with a harmonic balancer. And, uh, uh, you know, then ran um, the uh, uh, eight rib pulley and essentially kind of um, lined it up that way. Um, just keep in mind that, um, well, at least mine has some wiggle room, so the the power steering shaft 
actually moves back and forth a little bit so you have a little bit of play there and I'm sure on the tension when the engine running is gonna settle where it needs to be but the I have the uh, eight rib pulley set up with the AC compressor pulley off and the reason for that is I can get in here and then add tension to to the pulley in different areas that essentially allows me to line up um, the rest of the pulleys this way. If I had the alter, the um, AC pulley installed in here, it would be a lot more difficult because then the tensioner would be in the way uh, and that would be a bit of a mess. So at least for now, this gives me an idea by pressing down on the slack, uh, tightens the top part of it that runs through the grooved uh, pulley, the smooth idler, the alternator pulley, uh, the supercharger pulley, which is not installed in there, but I'm just kind of using it as a reference by uh, more or less placing uh, the edge of the of the uh, belt uh, as far back and on top of the, the last groove as possible. And uh, that way I can get a visual of what everything is gonna look like. Um, this pulley right here, is the a rib pulley that I got from Pulley Boys, and that's in the description. Um, but uh, I'm just essentially placing it on top and lining it up with the old one just to get a feel and, and what I can expect and which way to install it too. Um, it has a greater offset on one side than the other, so I have to take that into account. The original pulley, six rib, has the larger offset toward the back. So most likely that's probably what I'll have to do with the A-Rib, is install that with this one uh, facing the supercharger. Um, but if I mount it right on top of the old one flush with the back side of it, it looks like it fits perfectly the way it is. Uh, so fingers crossed that's exactly what happens. Uh, moving on to the rest, like the water pump. Uh, as well as, let me come around this way. So the water pump and the eight rib idler pulley that I purchased looks like it, it'll work quite well there. Um, I could add a couple of washers back here uh, just to bring it out a little bit. Uh, I'll probably end up doing that, but it looks like it won't be necessary. The smooth idler pulley on this side that would need to be drawn out a little bit um, as you can tell right now if, if this is actually how it ends up being uh, I may have to bring it out uh, a quarter of an inch or so so maybe I just had one or two uh, washers back there the the uh, tensioner the way it's sitting right now Fingers crossed, this is how it's gonna stay. Um, let's see if we can get a better look here. In this position, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be rubbing against the, uh, the lip here. And then it's gonna be sitting directly on top of the pulley. So fingers crossed, this actually will end up happening. But um, obviously at the end of the video, I'll have and the car running, I don't have everything, and I'll explain and do a recap of how everything ended up. Um, so, you may also want to invest in a Mosuline pulley, only because, uh, I mean, even in the past with the six rib, um, I always had the upper radiator hose making contact with the uh, with the pulley anyway, so I always end up um, getting these hoses damaged. Uh, once I got the pulley, essentially pushes it over more like so, and uh, as you can tell, it keeps it away from the upper radiator hose. So then I make the investment in buying a, a nicer looking one since I knew it wasn't going to get cut. Uh, as well as another timing cover bolt down here that also without the, the uh, Mosuline pulley, uh, it would not be possible to run this setup because it will rub up against that under tension. So the, the Mosuline pulley is gonna push it over 
and then it's gonna keep this uh, belt away from that uh, timing cover bolt. Uh, let's see what else here. So far, that is it. Uh, the Mosaline pulley is advertised for a six rib setup, but uh, I will have to modify it and I will show you guys how um, I did it to make it all fit. All right, it's it to figure out exactly how much uh, to trim the, uh, the sleeve um, that the bolt for the pulley sits on is that once you have uh, the bracket on a flat surface and you have uh, the, uh, the system set up this way, you can tell that now the pulley is flush with this uh, sleeve here. Uh, and this was bolted onto uh, part of the timing cover that uh, this pulley was making contact with. So as long as you trim this to be flush or even further uh, down, uh, you're not gonna have any issues at all with this pulley making contact with the timing cover. So I'm gonna test fit this, and if I need to grind some more, that's what I'll do. All right, I just installed the eight rib supercharger pulley. And as you can tell, I did end up installing the, uh, the pulley with the uh, greater offset to the rear, and then the flush part of it um, to the front. And it's a, it's a perfect fit. It looks like it was meant to be uh, on here from factory. So it all lines up perfectly so far. Uh, no spacers required there. Okay, here's something slightly different from the stock uh, groove tightly pulley and then the one that I ordered. Um, the size is relatively the same, uh, but what I'm noticing is that this is the stock bolt. That's a lot smaller than uh, the bolt that you're gonna get with the new Arlo pulley. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna remove uh, the assembly completely and then so that way I can take a better look and see what I can do with it. Hey guys, so I am done with the A-Rib conversion. However, there's a couple things I wanna point out that um, I would like to fix and that is the size of the belt that I went with and uh, I'm just nitpicking at the moment this pulley right here I currently have two spacers behind it but there's still just quite a bit of uh, of the uh, belt sticking out so what I did was I went and purchased another idler pulley um, that goes on the tensioner of, of the uh, 2000 F150 and I also purchased a belt from Napa that's uh, a little bit larger than the one I have on there now. So the one I have on there is 112.5, oh, I'm sorry, 112.4. Uh, and then I went with one that's a couple, a couple of inches larger and see if that makes a difference. So what's happening is that the, the belt itself is rubbing on the, on the uh, housing of the uh, tensioner here, as you can tell. However, it fits perfectly on the pulley itself, so I'm not worried about any of that. That's working like it should. So I just got something larger so that hopefully the um, the pulley or the belt sits a little bit further out and does, doesn't make contact with the uh, with the um, housing of the of the uh, tensioner. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Now look at this. I got the new A rib pulley. Uh, that was the same one that I used for the muscling pulley that came from the uh, tensioner of an F-150, 2000 F-150. Uh, put on there and check this out. Look how much clearance now I have uh, between the belt and, and the tensioner itself. There's no rubbing at all on this lip. It sits on there quite nicely. I already ran the car. Era. The belt is settled where it's gonna be running. There's no contact with the timing cover and everything seems to be aligned quite nicely. I do, I am running two spacers behind here um, from the 516s washer that I, uh, I dremeled out to make fit the timing cover lip uh, right where the, the, uh, the, the pulley sits. So I can probably go as much as one or two more spacers. So it's really up to you guys. Um, I just wanna get, get the car running, so I'll mess with this uh, later. 
as time goes on. But look at that, all done. Everything works. What I did for my power steering leak is that once I drained uh, the leak, I filled the reservoir with half of, uh, or half the reservoir will be filled with this. And then the other half uh, was filled with the recommended power steering fluid for my car, which is the Mercon 5 uh, transmission fluid. Film uh, regular driving just so you, so you can see what the uh, instant boost response now is with the A rate conversion. So, second gear, half throttle. Third gear, half throttle. Fourth gear, half throttle.